we're now going to change gears from the software to the hardware of Compass Control. This is part one of Compass Control, Master Controllers and Hardware. And we're gonna start off with our KD MC1000 Master Controller. This is a network-based product, of course, because Compass Control is a network-based control system. So when you look at this, and if you look at it physically, have it in your hands, you'll notice it's not a very large product. It is more of a shelf mount product versus a rack mount product. But the reason we did that is because it makes it so flexible. For example, if you have a centralized equipment uh, rack and you need to install one, two, five, ten of these in the rack, you can do so. Or if you have conference application, let's say, and you have an MC-1000 in each room has its own MC-1000, perhaps in furniture or uh, in the table, for example, um, you're able to do that more easily having one of these located per zone versus centrally because of its small stature. So what is on this thing? Well, on the face of the unit, you do have your USB connection, which is used um, when you're using our master controller device manager software to get the latest firmware and to set up your IP. Also, you have an IR learning window there on the front center. Very, very useful for uh, learning new IR remote control codes, which as we mentioned earlier, does have to happen from some from time to time, even though we have 160,000 different code sets. So what we always suggest is that you, your company has an MC1000 in your possession as your company unit, because it is gonna be a big benefit to you if you can do testing, but also your IR learning um, in the office ahead of time. Uh, compass control isn't typically something you wanna do um, on site because uh, you know programming is a time consuming thing. So moving further to the right, you have the multifunction ports one through six. And with these multifunction ports, these actually, um, they're, they're activated by voltage passing through their respective multifunction ports on the rear. So the LEDs only illuminate if the ports on the rear execute a command or voltage. So there's no programming which tells these lights to, to illuminate. It's a great troubleshooting mechanism. So for example, in the world of IR, infrared, you're accustomed to having blinking IR emitters and those emitters blink when voltage passes through. It's a great troubleshoot. Yes, some command is passing through, but in the world of RS-232, that's not a luxury you get. And, um, and so this is a way if a device doesn't respond to a command, you can begin by testing or troubleshooting, looking at, does a command actually execute? Well, yes, voltage is passing through as indicated by one of the lights, one through five uh, blinking there. Which brings us to the rear of the unit, and we'll start with these six multifunction ports. We call them MCP35, multifunction control port 3.5 millimeter. They are 3.5 millimeter stereo connectors, IR, RS-232, bidirectional, and voltage triggering and sensing. So very, very flexible there. We'll get into that in a moment. There is a relay a three port relay so you could have normally open normally closed settings there is a zigbee rs-232 port now that um there's an, a special accessory that ships with the mc-1000 that is a 3.5 millimeter three ring four conductor so it's got an extra contact versus a stereo connector and that's because that zigbee port when it was used with our zigbee antenna uh when we had the handheld remote that Zigbee antenna required power as well. So it's bi-directional communication, transmit, receive, ground, and power for the Zigbee antenna. Of course, that's gonna be a non-connect when you use uh, with the RS-232 adapter. However, uh, so you actually have seven control ports, one there being a dedicated RS-232. Um, and the network port, um, TCP IP is of course how the iPads will communicate in, iPad and Android, I should say, will communicate in to the network, uh, to the KDMC, MC1000, and uh, tell it as the brain, the iOS device and Android device, tell it, here's what you need to do in very 
very small packets, it tells it, okay, execute this IR burst or this RS-232 string t um, out of ports one, one through six, for example. Um, similarly though, the MC-1000 can actually execute commands um, and put those back onto the network in, in the network switch and in the router. And uh, that's useful if you have a device that, again, as we mentioned earlier, perhaps is a single socket device, meaning it only supports a single device to be connected uh, or to create a, an active uh, network socket with that at, at, at that time. And that's a very nice feature of the MC-1000 there. So let's look a little closer at the various functions of this true multifunction control port, compass port. So as IR, you could use a stereo. We give you emitters in the uh, packaging with MC-1000. And of course, the signal's on the tip. You have your ground on the base and the ring would just be no contact. IR in, why would you ever want IR in? We can actually listen for an IR signal we could do things with that uh, while we're listening, while we're uh, open for that IR signal. We could have a bidirectional driver, for example, that says, okay, if we receive this from the zone, then we need to execute this whole macro event. So that's a pretty neat feature, um, a, a, a port that's listening for specific IR commands to come in. We have bidirectional RS-232, tip, ring, and ground. Tip is TX, ring is RX, so T and T, R and R, that makes sense, and your ground on your base, of course. <clears throat> Voltage sensing. Uh, this is for the MC-1000 and MC-2500 only. The MC-2500 is no longer an active part, but there are units out there, of course, um, but not for our matrix switchers with the master controller uh, embedded. We'll get into that in the next section of these videos but you can sense voltage. So for example, um, a simple television is not a bi-directional RS-232 or TCP IP communicating device. Instead, a simple television um, can tell you it's on though by having live voltage when it powers on. Um, for example, the analog video connector will be, uh, what is it, two volts peak to peak signal there, I believe. And so what happens is you could create bi-directional events that say, oh, if the TV turns on because maybe somebody just pressed a button on the television, then let's go ahead and execute the rest of these events as well. Voltage triggering to control screens, to control um, relays, to control um, uh, shades and this kind of thing, uh, amplifiers, uh, five volt output level, voltage on the tip, and sensing not only for voltage, but as I mentioned before, composite video or PCM, just like before, you would just plug in on a 3.5. So there's not a need for a special accessory for trigger and sensing voltage uh, with the MCs in the compass control. So now what if you need an additional relay or a contact closure? That's where the KD CCXR200 comes into play and it just connects to one of those multifunction ports and in the programming, um, you will treat that port as a trigger. And if voltage is being triggered from that port, well, then the relay will go to the uh, open mode. If there's no voltage, it goes to the closed mode. And so this is quite nice. You could use this up to 100 feet away. Uh, you could use copper wire to extend that. And again, it just connects to the MCP35 port, one of the ports on your MC1000. And then not manufactured, not sold by Key Digital is our partner Global Cache and their iTAC series. They use Wi-Fi to then convert the incoming Wi-Fi signal to IR, RS-232, or uh, contact closure relay. So they're quite useful devices and quite affordable from what I understand. So that's a look at the basic control hardware that we have for Compass Control. And in just a moment, we're gonna continue on to show you some of the embodiment of what we have at Key Digital here, which is video and control all under one roof.